everyone, my name is Hannah Broadus and I work with Centra Foods. In this webinar, the topic that we're going to be covering today is how to save money on bulk ingredients for manufacturing. Now this is going to be without changing or modifying the ingredient that you're using. So to give you a little background, Centra Foods is a supplier of bulk olive oils and other blended edible oils to food and body care manufacturers in the U.S. And one of the central points of our business is actually working with customers to help make their buying run smarter. So what this means is normally we're doing evaluations of how our customers get their oil currently to see where their opportunities to save money. Now, this system, this, these evaluations, they can be applied to purchasing any ingredient in bulk, especially commodities, but because we're in the olive oil business, this is where all of my examples are going to lie. So just to give you a little bit of background, you know, there's two opposing ideas in the manufacturing marketplace right now. Um, there's, in the last 10 to 20 years, there has been a rise in the demand for healthy, natural, and high-quality foods, and therefore the ingredients that go in them. And at the same time, there's a strong drive, and this is something that's always been there, for manufacturers to continually cut costs and um, lower the, their cost of ingredients. So as purchasers, as I'm sure you all know, this puts you in a tight place constantly, trying to weigh your options and decide what it's all worth. You know, every sacrifice in the oil has to be weighed with the gain and the profits that you're making. So the result of this constant pull in two different directions forces you as a purchaser to look at different ways to save money that may not have been explored yet. Uh, as a supplier, we're always really surprised to see that some of the major manufacturers in the U.S. Uh, can utilize, you know, taking a look at some of these different ideas and putting them into practice because a lot of these cost-saving ideas, they're very simple, but they haven't been put into place yet because as humans, we stick to the status quo. Uh, so we want to be able to take you through some of these options so that you can make educated decisions as you're buying bulk oils or bulk other ingredients, whatever you may be buying for your manufacturing. So as a purchaser, you know that as you're first looking at a product and you're looking to cut cost, you know, that's, that's something that's always in the back of your mind as you're looking at an ingredient. How do I cut cost and add to my bottom line? The easiest thing to look at and the first thing that you should look at is the ingredient itself. Most people say, we need a cheaper product. That's the easiest way to cut cost. But in today's marketplace, We've seen over the last 30 years that the quality of the ingredients has been brought down and brought down further, and demand is really increasing for ingredients that have a higher quality, that are natural, that are whole, and that do your body good. So, of course, in the natural marketplace, this especially stands in the olive oil market because that's where olive oil is utilized quite a bit, is in whole and natural foods. So, with that in mind, you know, you can always reduce the quality of your ingredients. But as we're having this discussion today, we're going to take the quality of the ingredient as a given, something that you already know and you know that you want to stick with. So if you found that a quality of ingredient works really well for you, take that as a baseline into this discussion. We're going to start from there and see what other things you can do and types of ways that you can go about saving money without having to change the oil in the slightest. Now again, I say oil, but this can be any ingredient that you're using. So as you're first searching for a product, as a purchaser, you typically have a benchmark for what you're going for in terms of a price. You know, this is all, it goes back to the demand in the market and the cost that you can sell your end product for, and then you can work backwards to find out the cost that you'll need your ingredients to be within. And of course, this is all staying within a normal range that is actually realistic in the current market. But as you're doing price comparisons, many purchasers will agree that especially as you're looking in the commodity world, you're going to find that a lot of the prices are right in the same range. So price is not always the best benchmark to use as you're comparing suppliers. Now there's actually a lot of other different 
slightly alternative ways to cut cost without cutting ingredient quality. So there's lots of logistical things that play into price that a lot of times you may not think about. And those things can really help you cut your costs down. And uh, it really comes down to increasing the efficiency of some of those logistical things to cut down your cost. And I'd like to go through each one of those with you. So today we're going to be covering packaging, number one, uh, shipping, direct delivery programs, and forward contracts. Those are the four topics that we're going to be covering. And as you're looking at each of these factors, just know that your ingredient quality and sometimes even your suppliers are going to stay the same. But by taking a close look at some of those warehouse, storage, delivery, other logistical details, those can all help you cut down on unnecessary costs that you're paying. So to dive right in, packaging is number one. This is the easiest and most underutilized way to save money. Um, you know, most manufacturers are using drums. It's the most common manufacturing size, even with some of the largest manufacturers in the U.S. It's just become the norm across the board. Um, so to, to give you a little brief understanding of the drums, if you're not familiar with them, the drums are, um, they're a little bit smaller, they're 55 gallons. So to move them around the warehouse, that's still about 500 pounds a drum. You do need a pallet jack or a forklift. Uh, they pump out of a hole in the top and some manufacturers will actually tip them on their side and use a spigot or even pour them upside down into a complex production run. Um, so no matter how you go about it, they still require a reasonable amount of labor to be able to use them and move them around. Um, a similar pack size, which is the next size up, is the totes. And this is the first thing that I recommend for people to look at when they tell me that they're using drums. So that'll be the first thing, to take a look at the totes. And consider, number one, why you've liked the drums and why you've been working with them and why you haven't switched in the past. Um, again, for people that aren't familiar with the totes, there are a few different sizes of totes, um, but they all take up the same amount of space on a pallet when you're looking at the floor plan. Um, the, the height and volume of the tote can vary. The smaller totes are 264 gallons or 1,000 liter, and they go up from there to the 330 gallon size. But the important thing to keep in mind is that um, it takes up the floor plan of one pallet, which is typically a four foot by four foot space. And this is the same size that will, um, that your drums will take up because as you ship a pallet, when your drums deliver or your tote delivers, it all comes on a pallet and a pallet holds four drums or one tote. So when it sits on your floor, it takes up the same amount of space as the drums do. Um, the biggest difference when you're looking at the drums and the totes is that sometimes you can actually pack quite a bit of oil more onto this one pallet. For example, if you're using the 330 gallon, you're actually getting six drums worth of oil on this one pallet. We'll look closer at that in just a little bit. So as a little background, the tote has a spigot at the bottom and um, you can actually pour out of that spigot. You can also pump out of that. And uh, if you actually have a drum pump that you're really attached to, typically there's a hole at the top of the tote as well, and you can use those same drum pumps out of the top of the tote. Um, so for anybody that is using drums, it's really simple to consider switching to totes. In terms of the cost savings, I typically see the price drop a few cents a pound, so normally two or three, on the cost of the oil itself. But obviously, if you're removing packaging, your cost goes down. So as I had mentioned before, you can actually save even more on the shipping if you consider the 330 gallon totes. And this is because the shipping costs are, are very similar no matter what you're shipping. So if you're shipping drums or totes, typically it's going to be about the same cost, but it will, you know, if I, w I should say it's about the same cost going to your same location. Obviously, if you're shipping across the country or across town, it's going to be a different price. Um, but say we're shipping you know, across town and you're shipping drums or totes, the cost is very similar. 
But as we're looking at the 330 gallon totes, you actually fit six drums worth of oil on that one tote versus the four drums if you're actually shipping drums. So when you look at your shipping costs, they're actually 33% lower using these 330 gallon totes. Like all totes, they're available in uh, bag in a box versions or PET versions. Um, but to give you some real numbers, I'd like to just give an example for a second. Um, so if a pallet costs $300 to ship and you ship four drums on it, each of the drums costs $75 to ship. But if you ship a tote and you are shipping six drums worth of oil within that tote and it costs the same $300, it brings your per drum equivalent to $50 per drum instead of the original 75 by shipping six drums instead of four. So over the course of the pallet, that saves you $125 or about five cents per pound. So that's nothing to scoff about. You know, the, as I mentioned, it's two to three cents per pound using totes on, the, on um, the oil savings. And then you add in this transportation savings and you're looking at a savings of seven to eight cents on average. So, you know, as you're comparing prices, those few cents really matter. And it's an important thing to look at. Um, so the next largest pack packaging size that can cut costs uh, even more than the totes is looking at the next bulk size, which is the very large flexi tank deliveries. Uh, with olive oil, it's an imported product, so it's going to come in flexi tanks. Um, if it's a domestic supply that you're pulling from, it's going to come in tankers. Personally, at Central Foods, we found that the flexi tanks are a lot cheaper because you're cutting out a whole lot of warehouse and overhead costs and the domestic shipping costs. So we're going to take a look at the flexi tanks today. Now, no matter whether you choose those tankers or the flexi tanks, both of these options are cutting out packaging. Again, I explained before, you cut out packaging, your cost goes down. Um, the, the flexi tanks that I've seen can cut costs by, you know, it depends on the grade, but anywhere between 10 cents up to 30 cents, sometimes even more. So there's a wide variation, and a lot of this depends on what's going on in the market right then, but Either way, it's a pretty significant savings. And because these flexi tanks can cut the cost by so much, this packaging really does warrant being looked at very closely by manufacturers. And we find that it's a really underutilized option that would save quite a bit of money. You know, when we suggest it to folks, there's a lot of uh, immediate pushback to this idea because you may not have a storage tank set up and it's just kind of too much to think about doing it or starting a program uh, with a flexi tank delivery. And I just want to reiterate to you, it, it is really important to get over this he hesitation because getting set up is actually quite easy and it's very worthwhile. And this is, you know, in ease of use and in the incredible cost savings that you see. So again, a little bit of background if you don't know anything about the flexi tanks or the storage tanks. Um, storage tanks are typically going to be six to 10,000 gallon tanks that are stored at your facility and tie into your production line. Um, they can take a few weeks to set up. Typically, you're looking at four to six weeks. And of course, you do have to think about the storage space that these storage tanks are going to go into. Some folks have tank farms. Some folks actually put them indoors. And uh, to give you a general measure, they cost about $30,000 to set up. But as we're working with manufacturers, these startup costs are normally paid off in the savings that you see in the oil within 6 to 12 months. And you start saving money very quickly after that. So most of the time... First year, you're looking at somewhere between, um, you know, either you're paying $5,000 or you're saving, you know, we've, we've given quotes up to saving uh, $15,000 that first year. That's a typical average. And then uh, your savings jumps to about $30,000 more than that for every year after that. So you're looking at a twenty-five dollars to, say, fifty dollars or $70,000 savings from every year after that. Um, 
let's see. So as you're looking at you know, your five-year, your 10-year plan, you can really see that these cost savings, $50,000, $70,000 a year, even twenty-five, dollars they add up very quickly. And they're, so it's a very worthwhile uh, thing to, to look at realistically for your business. Um, sometimes it is helpful to have a supplier walk you through the process, somebody that can help you set up those tanks. A lot of times that is the, the most difficult um, bound to get over is the process of actually getting the, the new system set up. So for example, with Centra Foods, um, we walk our customers through it. We do an evaluation process and um, we go to your facility. We help you get all the materials that you would need, set it up, train your staff. So it does help to have a supplier that will walk you through that. And it's pretty important to find someone that won't leave you high and dry as you're going through that process. Um, if you've already got a storage tank set up, then great, you're a step ahead. Uh, so looking at these storage tanks, we really only recommend this for companies using an annual usage of about 250,000 pounds or more per grade because, you know, your storage tanks, you're going to put one grade in each. And um, as you're looking at blends, there are a couple different systems that we can suggest in those cases as well. So we've worked with some of the major manufacturers that are still using drums or totes and could really benefit from flexi tanks. And um, after a cost analysis, typically, as I mentioned before, you're looking at about $30,000 the first year, $80,000 for every year after that. Sometimes you're, you know, you're only saving, you're, you're not saving anything the first year, it's the same cost, but then for every year after that, you're saving $30,000. And so again, the reason that people don't move forward with this is the hesitation to go through the process and start a new system in your warehouse, but it is very well worth it. Just talk to someone, run some numbers, you know, ask your supplier or other suppliers to help you do the comparison and see what's going to make sense or where your volumes need to be for it to start to make sense. Um, so I want to do a quick reminder on shipping. For all of you that, that don't know, most people do this and they stick to this, but we have found a few companies that really do not um, comply with this and they could save a lot of money. Uh, always ship a full pallet. No exceptions. Uh, if you're going to ship one drum, it's going to cost you about the same as shipping four drums, which is a full pallet. So, for example, as you're as this is shipping with a freight carrier, a freight carrier typically doesn't care if there is one drum strapped to that pallet or if there is four drums. The only difference to them is weight. It takes up the same amount of space in the truck. So, you know, the cost is about the same. And, for example, you know, you can t transition your system to um, ordering a pallet versus a drum very quickly. It's, for example, if you're using one drum a month, don't buy one drum a month. Buy four drums every four months and you'll end up saving 75% on your shipping cost. Now at Central Foods, uh, a price break happens at one pallet. So if you buy less, the oil is more expensive. Um, that may vary with different suppliers, but across the board you should always buy a full pallet. Now the next thing that's going to cut down on cost, this is number three that I mentioned, is direct deliveries from the Mediterranean. So direct deliveries are full containers that are being delivered direct from the manufacturer overseas. These can be flexi tanks, but they can also be full containers of drums or totes. And direct shipments going from their location in the Mediterranean that it's being manufactured at, and um, it's going directly to you. So you're cutting out every cost that you possibly can. You're cutting out the domestic LTL, which stands for less than truckload shipping. So any pallet shipping that you're doing domestically across the country, you're cutting all of that out. Um, you're cutting out the intrinsic costs of warehousing and overhead um, and any additional resellers cost if you're buying it from a distributor. And sometimes you're cutting out packaging costs if you opt for the flexi tanks as well. So they work really well for companies in particular that have a prediction of what they're going to need for the next quarter, or they have some sort of steady usage where they know what to expect. 
Um, it works great for companies that use a lot of oil, but it also does work well for customers that surprisingly actually have a reasonably smaller usage. Um, to give you a little bit of background, one container is, uh, that's one flexi tank, or um, 20 totes that fit in one container, or 80 drums. This is the smallest container size. There are some larger options um, that can be discussed on a custom basis too. So typically these can be mixed grades and they're all quoted with a delivered cost. So the, the best part about this is, is that you don't have to deal with any of the importing hassle, the laws, anything like that. There's no domestic truckload shipping cost. It's just as simple as you did with um, when you place POs for one pallet, works just the same. You place your PO for 80 drums or 20 totes, whatever it might be. So there are some things to consider though. Um, storage space. Do you actually have the room to hold 20 pallets in your facility at one time? And this is just one of your ingredients, so you have to prioritize. You know, do you realistically have the space? If your space is in high demand, is it really worthwhile to you? And um, you know, if you do have a bigger warehouse with ample space, this is definitely a worthwhile plan to consider. So if you don't have the space or you're set up for um, just-in-time deliveries of one to two pallets, there is actually a good way to incorporate this into the direct delivery program that we're going to go over. Um, we actually we call this a local supply program, and it's a program that we set up. And um, we work with you in advance to uh, set up a full local supply system where we ship your olive oil by the container direct from the manufacturer to a local fulfillment warehouse in your town. So you don't pay a thing to get started with this. And of course, you don't pay a thing to, you know, have the discussion and, and get pricing and, and go through the whole uh, initial evaluation. But it does require a supply contract. And all this does is say, Yes, I'm interested in this amount of inventory, and if you bring it to my location in my town, I'm going to use it within this rough time frame. So we can actually, we can set up automatic deliveries from this fulfillment center, or you can pull the inventory as you need it by the pallet just by placing, a, you know, a, an inventory release or a PO for that smaller volume. Um, this program, it actually has lower shipping costs than shipping across the country. Many people are using suppliers that are not located in their town because there's only a few large suppliers. And so typically you are shipping um, across the country or you know at least halfway. And that's a very standard thing in our industry. Um, so there, the, the lead times are normally one to two days and you can actually pick up same day. And the best part is that you get the same quality oil. This is the same thing that would be an in inventory in your supplier's warehouse. Um, but, you know, you're committing to it in a larger volume that you will take over time, but you only pay for it as it delivers. So it works very similarly to just doing normal pallet shipments, except for, you know, you save a lot of money on shipping and you simply are signing a document saying, yes, I'm interested in this volume over this amount of time. Um, so this program is slightly more expensive than doing deliveries of a full container to your location. And normally it's a few cents per pound more because it covers warehousing costs, just like if it was coming from a packing facility. Still, I'd like to give some number examples for this because a lot of times people have a hard time understanding how smart this direct delivery program is. So, for example... I'm going to use an example of um, a, a imaginary Salt Lake City customer that uses a pallet of oil a week. Um, so, you know, as, let's take a look at, at this customer. They are using one pallet a week. They could have it shipped from their supplier that may be, you know, halfway across the country or at least a few states away. Um, they could receive it in a full truckload that comes to their facility and they delivers 20 totes, or they could set up a local supply program where they say, yes, I would like to co commit to um, 20 totes over the next six months. And that inventory will actually get stored at a local facility in their town 
and they'll be able to place a PO for one pallet every week to be delivered to them. Perhaps they have trucks and they can pick up. So they actually save quite a bit of money. Now the third thing that I want to take a look at is um, forward contracts. Any purchaser that's dealing with commodities has probably heard of this, working with forward contracts. So depending on what you're buying, these contracts work differently. Um, sometimes you are committing to a particular volume. Sometimes you're actually getting a blanket price for a time period um, with no required volume involved. Um, but for the most part, these contracts are going to be strongly affected by what's going on in the global market in that particular industry at that time. So, for example, with olive oil, sometimes you can actually lock in uh, anywhere between a one-month to a 12-month price contract for a particular volume of olive oil that you're using. Uh, you do have to be using a reasonable amount of volume, so at least three to four containers a year to even start discussing price contracts. But um, you typically have to agree to purchase a particular amount of volume, and then um, you can indicate when you'd like to make these purchases. Now I say a 1 to 12 month price contract because it really depends on what's going on in the market. Um, you know, after the price jump that occurred in September 2012, it was very difficult to contract at all with that market. Um, when the market is great, for example, you know, six months before that, you could easily sign a 1, 2, sometimes even 3 year contract for the oil. So it really just depends. Um, so watch the market closely, use your suppliers to get information on the current market and see if this is something that this is that you'd even really want to look into and talk to them very realistically about what you have to agree to on your end to make it, to make it work. So in conclusion, you know, work with your team closely. I, I would suggest, if anything else, um, go back to your operations, you know, the rest of your purchasing team. Um, your receiving and shipping team to look closely at all of these different elements that can play into cost to see if any of these will work for, for you and uh, work with the systems that you already in place that you already have in place that you can modify you know smaller things and it'll help you save quite a bit of money. So ask them lots of questions and see what's going to work best. Um, if you want more information, you can subscribe to our blog. You can download our uh, How to Save Money on uh, Bulk Olive Oil for Manufacturing Guide. Or if you'd rather talk to someone in person, give us a call and we can set up a free personal consult for your business. Thanks so much. Have a great day.